Then we had Ibushi and Sonata in the G1 final, and we talked a lot about Ibushi earlier. Sonata was great in this match. Oh, by the way, so, so in the in the um, the match, um, which one was it? Um, the Tanahashi Jeff Cobb match. Um, they did do after the match the big tease of um, Tanahashi and Kenta with a briefcase. And what's interesting about that is. I could see. I mean, they've they've done. Um, they did that with Juice as well on this tour, but I could really see that that them doing um, Tanahashi and Kenta, and I would put Tanahashi over because then it leads to Tanahashi and Moxley. Now, granted, God only knows when you can do that match, but I think that that um, Tanahashi Moxley is a much bigger match than. Um, than uh, Moxley and, and Kenta. The only difference is is that, well, I'm, you know, it's like, like in theory, the idea is is that um, you could do it in the United States uh, because Moxley's going to have a hard time getting to Japan, but Kenta lives in the United States. But I don't know how much Kenta's going to be in the United States because most of these guys, other than um, in December for a couple of weeks, they're pretty much staying because the when you know when you go in and you have to quarantine for a couple of weeks, it kind of makes no sense to go home, um, you know. Uh, so they're not going to have you know a lot of you know I don't I don't know that Kenta and Jay White and these guys are going to be in the United States doing that New Japan Strong Show anyway. So it's just a mess where you got um, you know you've got this whole program and this this for the U.S. title. And you got a champion that, because of the pandemic, um, it's just screwed. I mean, that's all you can say. It's just, it's just a mess. Um, and you know that's going to affect the Tokyo Dome. But like, yeah, if they would have, if this would have been normal, and I could really see Ghetto's booking to where you know one of the Tokyo Dome matches is Tanahashi and Moxley. But I do not see, um, you know. I don't see that as a possibility that that it can happen unless restrictions. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen January fourth and fifth. If Japan will just go, yeah, you, people can come. But man, I do not see Japan saying, yeah, Americans just can just come here now. Man, I don't. I <laughs> that's the last thing I expect that that Japan's going to do right now. So, um, you know, the pandemic is going to definitely affect those the dome show. I mean, a lot of people who, you know big names that that they would have had on these shows um a lot of them i think won't be able to be there so as noted sonata looked awesome in the main event and this was the other match where we had people screaming for sonata during this match his achilles heel is of course himself he at one point had the uh, skull end on ibushi and ibushi is out the referee raises the arm once he raises the arm twice. It looks like Ibushi's done. But as always, Sonata lets go, and he goes for the moonsault, and Ibushi gets the knees up. That was super because of the whole nature, and they really did a great job putting it over because of... It's like Kevin Kelly was great here because he just goes like... He had two choices. He either takes the moonsault, and he loses the G1, or he gets his knees up, and he destroys his leg that's already destroyed. And um, so it made it like, you know, the moonsault into the knees up or the high fly flow into the knees up. I mean, that spot is like done, you know, the lion salt into the knees up, whatever. That spot is done all the time. And this was probably the single most effective way it's been done in months. So they have this great spot near the end where Ibushi keeps going for the Kamagoye. Sonata cradles him. He goes for it, he cradles him. The crowd's going crazy for these cradles. And finally, Ibushi tries something but collapses. Sonata puts him in the skull end, or he goes for it. Ibushi hits a high kick, jumping knee, Kamagoye. Sonata becomes the first man ever to kick out of his Kamagoye. And so Ibushi grabs him, and he hits a second Kamagoye, and he gets the pin. So... You could see from kicking out of the Kamagoye that the intention was, as Dave noted earlier, for this to be by far the best match of the tournament. But it wasn't it for wasn't. a lot of reasons. But it was still yeah. it was a really very good, good finale. And yeah. Ibushi wins for the second year in a row. Yeah, so the only guys ever done this, Chono and Tenzon. And they brought that up too. And he, in his, in his post-match promo, 
you know, brought up that Shona and Tenzon are the only guys. And Shona was the guy who handed him the trophy when it was over. And no angle at the end. I was expecting, I mean, he was just so beat up at the end of that match. And I was like, this is the perfect time. But I guess they just decided to give him his, his moment. And looks like, you know, if, I mean, there'll be matches, but I can't imagine, I can't imagine, um, Ibushi winning this and not being in the main event at the Tokyo Dome. I don't really expect Naito to lose the championship. So it looks like Naito and Ibushi is, is going to be the January 4th main event. And, um, you know, um, I, I, you know, I could see it going either way, but my gut says I don't think they're going to have Ibushi lose the main event at the Tokyo Dome two straight years. So I think that this may be um, Ibushi's first IWGP title win. I know that that's, everyone's going to come to that conclusion, and that doesn't mean they may not do it, but it's like, I, I don't know that you want to lose the Tokyo Dome twice in a row. He could because he's so good that, you know, you it's it's not like it's going to kill him to lose, but I think this is... this. This might be it. Um, and, um, you know, he did the whole thing of, uh, which everyone does, you know, the thing of, um, you know, that you can't wait for the crowds to be at full and sold out arenas and things like that. And, you know, one of the things that, um, that has been, it's kind of cute is, and Juice Robinson and Tanahashi have been doing this, is like, you know, you can't high five fans. Okay. You, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to touch the fans. So Juice like goes around the ring and he pretends he's high fiving people and Tanahashi like hugs himself, you know, like he's going to hug the fans, but he can't hug them. He's not allowed to. So he hugs himself as a sign of I'm um, hugging the fans. And it's such a, both are such incredible baby face spots. Um, and, uh, Juice is really good at getting the crowd going and, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So, so, well, you haven't seen the whole thing, but, oh man, MVP is tough. I think, uh, wow. Wow. Um, the guy who had the best matches that I saw was a she. Yeah, I think he'll win. I think he'll win MVP, but, um, Osprey is close. Takagi's close. And of course, Suzuki for sure is, is in there and Tanahashi too. All of them. Um, and then best match. Um, I got to think that, uh, Ibushi Suzuki, nothing, I, I don't think anything beat Ibushi Suzuki. I would say that was the best match I saw. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you saw all the good ones, I think. I, I did think... see all of the good ones. I don't yeah. think there was any match that people thought was great that I missed. Yeah. Yeah. 